long day, I think it's going to be an interesting topic to follow. So today I want to talk about process mining in sports, or more specifically in football. And before I start the presentation, just a quick introduction about myself. So uh, coming from Iran, I did my uh, master in EIT Digital Master School, um, did uh, a master in a data science. So the first year I was at TUE, where I get to know process mining, had a course with Professor Will van der Aals, and understood how exactly apply process mining in different, let's say, uh, applications. The second year I went to Sweden at KTH, continued my studies. And right now I am at uh, Jeronimus Academy of Data Science, a post-master student. Uh, from September, I will join the Dutch football national team uh, as my final project for one year. And here we have uh, Wim Neuten and Esther van Eindhoven, both from uh, TUE, who are among the steering committee, will supervise me during this uh, project. So with this introduction, I jump into exactly what I did. Uh, coming back to six months ago, I was looking how to apply a process mining in uh, football, something that I'm passionate about and starting looking for exactly what are the data sets available for football. So uh, I found a data set for the World Cup 2018, where uh, there, are, there are some people who watch the match and encode all actions that are happening on the pitch. Uh, the data set is publicly available on this uh, URL, which you can have access. And I just show how it looks like, for example, for a specific match in the World Cup, Iran against Portugal. Uh, you have a specific moment like the penalty. And these are how the data is encoded by some people who are watching the match. And they say which player, what did, uh, what time, what was the coordinates on the pitch, and what was the, for example, outcome of the action that the player took. For example, here it says uh, Ronaldo. Uh, took the action, a penalty, uh, and the second half, a uh, minute uh, yeah, 52, and the uh, outcome was unsuccessful, so the goalkeeper kept the ball. Having this data, the next step was to see how I can apply process mining in football. So first I should define a process, because it's not a standard process like a purchase to pay or order to cash and I should see how I can find a process in this, let's say, on the pitch. So I was thinking about different scenarios, and in the end, I defined a ball position process, which is a sequence of actions a team who has the ball takes from the beginning until they lose the ball position. And here I just show an example of how it looks like. So here the white team, uh, Iran, is starting the position, so they start uh, by taking some actions. So the actions can be like a pass, uh, a long pass, or then uh, multiple actions that they take consecutively until they, in the end, lose a chance to score in the last minute. So this is like a process that I have defined, a starting taking some actions in a sequence, and then it ends with a specific result. Now it's time to define a question that I want to answer using process mining. I want to see how a football team poses the ball. And using the definition of the ball, uh, uh, let's say, position I have, I see how the data set exactly looks like after doing a pre-processing. So the first data set was in a JSON format, but when after doing the pre-processing, we have a CSV table, like we have a case ID, which shows the sequence number. We have an action, which shows wh what was the action, uh, the players taking, which player was taking that action, when it was taking, and for example, different attributes, where on the pitch that action has happened. And what's the application of applying process mining or doing analytics in sports? So the main uh, apl uh, application is for the head coach or the coaching staff who want to prepare for a match. Before a match, they should know how the opponent is playing, how their own team is playing, and what is working and what's not. So, for example, in the ball position process, if they understand how the opponent uh, moves the ball on the pitch, and then they map it with their own, uh, let's say, understanding and what they exactly ask from their own players. So they can uh, match the reality with what they, what's their ideal situation that should happen. 
So uh, taking one specific team, uh, Belgium, in the World Cup, and they had seven matches, and just putting the data set into Disco. So we have 100, uh, let's say, activities, and only showing the most important pass. So it's expected that wall position process starts from a pass, and it can have multiple passes. Then different activities can happen. It can happen an uh, interception, a fall can happen, a pressure can happen. So, but we want to continue. Here we have a self-loop and pass, which we can just continue and see how we can get more insight out of the outside of this process. Some statistics, this process had 594 cases and 295 variants. And when we look at the top variants in the Variant Explorer, we can see that the top variant had only 8% of the cases, which shows the variety of the process that we have. And it was only one activity. So the Belgium only took one action pass, and then they lose the ball position. The second top variant is two activities. They have two passes, then they lose the ball position. And the third activity is three passes, and they lose the ball position. We can have another perspective. We can say, OK, the activity now is a player. And we want to see which players are involved in a ball position process. We can see the ball position process starts from a goalkeeper. Then it can go to the, let's say, different players like the defender or middle fielder. And there is one player called Jan Wertonchen on the right side, which is like a distributor that distributes the ball among different players on the pitch. Some statistics about this perspective, again, 595 for uh, cases, but the number of variants is 524. It shows that we have very specific, let's say, uh, unique cases. The first variant, which only represents like 1% of the cases, which is Kevin De Bruyne, which only takes one action, and then the ball position ends. The second variant, Jan Wertonchen, takes one action, the ball position ends, and the third variant, uh, Tibor Courtois, which is the goalkeeper, takes one action and the ball position ends. Coming back to the process that we have, we have a pass which, uh, let's say, which expected in a ball position process, you have a lot of passes. And we want to use a technique called unfolding. So if you look at the sequence, you have pass, pass, pass. But if you want to see how many passes we had. So the technique is uh, described in more uh, details in the blog post by Fluxicon. But when we added, uh, let's say, we unfold the loops, and when we import it into Disco again, we can see when we have 100 activities and 100 uh, pass, the spaghetti picture, uh, which is expected to have uh, this picture in a ball position process. But when we just decrease uh, the sidebar, only the 50% of the activities and only the most important pass, we can have this, uh, let's say, picture, which the sequence starts from one pass, then the second it can go to the interception or pressure or the second pass and continues. The next step is to, so, so far we have seen how to, let's say, apply process mining and see how the process looks like. But thinking again, maybe the ball position process is a very complex process and it has some sub processes inside it. For example, when I add the action and type of the action together as an activity and import it into Disco, I can see a ball position process can start from a pass from a corner, a pass from a counter attack, a pass from a goalkeeper. So it has some sub processes inside this process. And the one way to simplify a process, which is very complex, to see if there is any sub-process inside it, and only is study those sub-processes separately. So again here, we can, as a next step, only focus on ball position processes from a corner, or ball position processes from a counter-attack. So in this way, we reduce the complexity and the number of variants. The final application here for a coaching staff is to find undesired sequences which happen on the pitch and which players are involved in those sequences. For example, they can go to the Variant Explorer and see one of the variants which uh, represents 11% uh, of the cases. There is only one action which is a pass from true in. And then Belgium loses the ball position. This situation should not be something which happens for Belgium in a World Cup. And when they continue the fil creating a filter on these sequences, they see the player Jan Wertonchen is 
responsible in 45% of the sequences, which was only one action uh, having the, uh, during the pause. Uh, when we continue and want to explore this sequence, we can see how this specific sequence looks like. So we can see, for example, this specific sequence where uh, Jan Vertokhan was involved has happened, for example, in a match against Panama and in the 73rd yeah, minute. So we can go exactly to the exact moment on the pitch and see what was the situation, why this player is doing so. Okay, so this is exactly the same moment and the player loses the ball position with only one action and the interesting thing here is that he continues this behavior less than one minute. So if you just continue this video, you see this next sequence which has happened, exactly the same place, exactly the same player, and he can, uh, repeats exactly the same behavior. So it's just less than one minute, he continues the same behavior and the same uh, outcome. Okay, uh, so far we defined what, what's the process, and so it was a very difficult task because it was not a standard process uh, to define the ball position process. The next step could be redefining the process. For example, we'll divide the pitch to different zones and see how the ball moves from different zones and create different filters. For example, we say which sequences uh, with which characteristics, which mean uh, which zones, uh, for example, uh, are needed in a sequence until Belgium enters to zone number 11. And we create a filter and see which uh, sequences, which, which characteristics are uh, involved. So we can have different filters, starting from one particular zone, ending in one particular zone, through one or more zones. These are the type of filters that we can create. And it comes to the conclusion, so I don't expect you to apply process mining in football, but the lessons that you can learn and the takeaway message is maybe you have something in your organization or company. In the first look, it's not a process, but you can think about it as a process, defining, having the right assumptions and defining a process. You have a case ID, you have an activity, you have a timestamp, and just import it into Disco and see how it looks like. Another lesson is there is no one perspective. We had one data set, but we had action as our activity. We had a player as our activity. We can take the zones as our activity. So, and there is no one perspective. Maybe you put the data set into Disco and see it's a very complex picture, so you should try to simplify it. Maybe we, yeah, we use unfolded loops a technique. We try to look for sub-processes to simplify the process that we have. And yeah, thanks for your attention and any questions? Now, I'll start off with a comment before my question, because normally when you have a cross-mining project and you find some people to blame, that's something you shouldn't do, right? But <laughs> I can see that here it's a little bit of a different situation. Um, my question was, you were um, showing very nicely that, that you can take very different uh, perspectives in terms of what you see as the activity, and they uh, give different kinds of insights. Um, for the case ID, you chose the ball possession, which makes a lot of sense. I'm just curious, did you also play with other case ID views and uh, uh, were they useful or not? So, no, I only defined the ball position process mm -hmm. and for this process, uh, the case ID will be the sequence number of that position mm -hmm. and that's the only thing I uh, considered. Yeah. Any more questions for Hadi? Okay. Yes, one question over there. Let's get a microphone. To Um, did you look at uh, what process would lead to a goal? Like what would be an unsuccessful process to a goal and what was a successful process to the goal? Yeah, so there are different, let's say, filters that you can create. But considering, for example, in the World Cup, only seven matches and the number of goals compared to the all sequences, so it's not that many sequences. 
So that's also another challenge that you have, for example, in a sport, so you don't have that, that many matches. And the number of sequences we had was 500 sequences. So the number of goals becomes very lower. And then you're finding something which is a pattern inside it, how they approach a goal is not the case. But when you look for uh, set pieces or sub-processes like a corner kick uh, or counter attack, which are, they, let's say, are something that the teams practice for it, and they have a plan, so they have a pattern inside it, and you can maybe f look for something inside those set pieces. Thanks. Okay, let's think, how do you get...